mucilage. Hi, I'm Phil. Hi, I'm Kevin. Welcome to Pretty Good Cooking. Pretty good. Tonight on this show, we're gonna make bindi masala. It's a okra stir fry from the country and nation of India. Okra is also sometimes called lady fingers. And as an avid gardener, I like to grow. This year, we grew okra that my wife called giant African okra, but I don't know if that's what it is. And hey, check it out. It's massive. <laughs> These pods are crazy. Nice, delicate lady fingers. That's right. Hey, viewers, if your lady got fingers like this, let us know. So typically with okra, the smaller pods are the tastier ones. <laughs> so who knows what these will be like, but I figure it can't be that bad, you know, if we fry them up with the nice spices. So let's begin by washing our okra. Many people have kind of a bias against okra because okra can be slimy. And I was doing my, uh, my modicum of uh, research on okra. The substance in okra that is uh, slimy is called mucilage. And I only can remember that because it sounds like fuselage. <laughs> so I am gonna wash it and we'll talk a little bit about methods for preventing the okra from being slimy. But really what it comes down to is kind of, oh my God. <laughs> um, it comes down to drying your okra before you fry it. And then you fry the okra with nothing else. It's one of the ways that you can help cut down on the sliminess. I saw a couple of different notes that basically said you can also try salting and even vinegaring the okra before you chop it. And you even, you want your cutting board to be dry. Everything should be dry, as dry as you can get it. But the other thing that I saw is that um, you don't want to move it around too much in the pan. Apparently even just jostling the okra can, can make it slimy. So we'll see. Uh, I have not worked with this okra yet, um, but I am excited to. So we're gonna use a nonstick pan today. I read that's actually one of the, the more perfect things to do, and we'll just use a neutral oil. Today we'll use canola oil or vegetable oil. I'm not really sure what is in this bottle. And a lot of the notes I saw said, don't hold back on the oil. Okay, using more oil can actually help it also not become slimy. I almost feel like there's, it's almost like a, there might be a degree of superstition, you know, of like, you know, just do a whole bunch of things and hopefully it doesn't turn out slimy. So just on the initial cut, so I've cut off the tip and the cap. It's definitely a little slimy, but it's not terrible. Depending on the type of okra you have, I'm gonna ch chop mine on the diagonal because I think it'll look pretty doing that, but you can do it however you like. And it's, it's not bad. I do think it'll probably be a little bit slimy, but it's not bad. Yeah, that's slimy. That particular pod that I just chopped was very difficult to chop. To me means it's either underripe or it's just weird because it's this big ass okra. This could be a complete failure. <laughs> like this, this dish could easily turn out to be inedible, but I, you know, I hope it's not. I hope it is edible. Okay, oil's popping. There it is. So we'll go ahead and start frying the okra. And I'm gonna try to get like a, a single layer, at least, you know, get it into the oil. Maybe I'll give it, I'll give it like a toss. Oh no, slimy. Shut up, Kevin. <laughs> so we'll let that fry. And while that's frying, we'll move on to other things. Okay, so uh, I'm tired. You know, I'm a working adult. So I'm gonna use tools to make this go faster. Like Kevin. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I, yes. <laughs> I don't know what to say. So, uh, in a masala, masala is almost always very similar ingredients. You know, you typically have fried onion, ginger, garlic, tomatoes. So I'm gonna do kind of a, a hybrid today. So I want some chopped onion, but the vast majority of my masala I'm gonna throw into a food processor and that will allow me to chop a lot less things, make this dish go a lot a lot faster. So I do have some onion, so I want that texture of chopped onion, but everything else I'm just gonna blitz, which is just, I just did this for uh, the doll that we're eating tonight and it was a great success. So here's two halves of an onion, piece of ginger, we'll get some garlic going. I'm actually, uh, I'm actually almost out of my homegrown garlic already. We've been using it like crazy, but well, that's good. Good to use things, better than it, you know, going bad. That's a big it is a big clove. Big cloves for big boys. 
Big lady fingers. Love. Big cloves of garlic. A memoir. Yeah, I'm just gonna go with two large cloves today. Check this bad boy out. It's so, this is so nice. For a masala, do this. Do that. And if you wanted it uh, to be like a chunky masala, you could just leave it there or you could go a little bit longer, get a little bit more paste-like. And bada boom, bada bing, it's ready to go. Save us a ton of time. Got some nice char. I'm definitely seeing a little bit of stickiness, but nothing that we, that is off-putting to me. Still looks good. Okay, other things that we will put in our masala today, chopped chilies. These are just green cayennes from my garden. You can do one or two, and we'll just go with one today so that John doesn't complain too much. And that might be it for now. I think we're just gonna fry, fry for a little bit. Okay, I'm happy with my initial okra fry. You can see we got some good browning. It looks pretty tender. So I'm going to transfer those to this bowl here and we will get some more oil going and get our masala going. So you can use ghee, oil, coconut oil, really whatever you like. I'm gonna start by adding my chopped onions and we'll give those a nice fry. I'm gonna try the okra. That's not slimy, that's good. I feel good about the future of this dish. It's also not quite cooked, but that's good because we are going to add it back to our masala at some point. I forgot I was going to throw in the whole spices. That's fine. Let's go ahead and do it now. We're going to add a bunch of cumin seeds to the onions and actually a bit more oil still. If you want to do other whole spices, you can. Up to you what you want to do. You can add like a little cinnamon. You could do coriander seeds. You could do cardamom, mace, those kind of things. So I'm just gonna be browning these onions for a little bit. It's probably the slowest part of the, the thingy. All right, so I got some nice browning on the onions. There'll be a little bit of fireworks probably because there is liquid. Oh man, no, no fireworks, just kidding. Here's our garlic ginger onion paste. And we'll give that a little bit of a mix. And now it smells incredible in here. Go ahead and get our spices going too. So let's get some chili powder into that masala. Lots of chili powder. And some coriander. Looks like I need to buy more coriander. And a little bit of turmeric. Considerably less turmeric than the other things. Otherwise it'll be bitter. Hey, and look at that. It's starting to look like a masala. Definitely needs to cook down a bit more though. So our next step is we're gonna add some tomato product. I have some tomato paste that's left over. So I'm just gonna toss some of that in. And I'm also gonna add some tomato sauce. Probably what would be more on the nose or more traditional would be fresh tomato puree. So like a couple of tomatoes that you blitzed. I kinda only have garden tomatoes and don't wanna sacrifice them for masala, so this should be close enough. We'll say half a can of tomato sauce. Just kinda eyeballing that. And we'll work that into today's masala. And it's kind of at this point that we have to make a decision. There's lots and lots of variations on this dish. Some of them are more like a stir fry and some of them are more like a curry. Like having a gravy versus having more of just like chunky vegetables. I'm gonna go with the gravy version today because uh, I think that will be more fun to feature. But if you wanted to, you could, instead of using these pastes like I am, you could keep like the onions in big chunks, tomatoes in chunks as well, and then serve the okra that way. It'd be quite nice. But today, go on the gravy route. Look at this nice, nice masala. Which tastes good, but it has the distinct taste of that tomato sauce I put in. Which is not, it's not the end of the world. Like, it, it'll be good. We'll get there in the end. I probably shouldn't have used that. Maybe don't use that. Next up, we're going to add some yogurt to turn this into a nice gravy. Use probably about a half a cup of the yogurt. And again, we'll work that into the masala. Probably would have been easier if I had like whipped that yogurt a bit, but it's okay. I do think it's really fun when making this kind of food to work it together and you kind of like build, build your gravy. And we'll taste as we go. Oh man, it's really good. I do think that uh, I need to adjust the spices a little bit. I feel like it could use more, more spices. But what spices? I hope you don't judge me too harshly for this, viewer. But I think I'm just gonna throw some curry powder in it, uh, and that's. I know it's a, it's a rough one, but that's specifically because my spice inventories are a little bit low right now. So I just want that. I just want to take that shortcut, <laughs> you know. And of course, that uh, has completely changed the smell of this. Oh, I meant to add the chilies, John. You almost. You almost let me forget. Definitely should have had those cooking in there longer, but that's okay. Now they'll just be like a fresh chili garnish. 
Oh yeah, that the curry powder is what what we needed. I definitely think it needs more cumin too, but I'm I'm out now. So oh well. Okay, and now we're gonna add a little bit of water, and we'll add our okra back in as well. A little bit of water. Now time for the okra. Which I will say, kind of feel like maybe a little bit too much gravy for this okra, but I'm not gonna complain about that personally. Anyone else gonna complain about too much gravy? Yes. How rude. Okay, so here, we're basically just gonna tuck our okra into the sauce and we'll let it simmer till the okra is nice and tender. Just like that. Okay, here's our bindi masala. And I will comment that our misgivings about how hard it was to chop the okra at the beginning, I think uh, we're, we're correct. <laughs> in that some of this okra is very, very tough. Not inedible by any means, but, you know, difficult to be edible. All right, let me find a tender pod. Mmm, the pods that are tender are awesome. The other ones, they're tough. They're still edible, but, um, have you ever had, like, a tomato where a little bit of the stem got left in there or something? Or, like, the core? That's kind of what it reminds me of. Good taste, bad texture. <laughs> yeah, can we try some? Just look for a pod. That seems soft. That's good. I should find a hard one, shouldn't I? It'll be super obvious because you'll chew and you'll chew and you'll chew and you'll chew. Oh wow. Oh yeah, I like it. Soft. The soft one's really good. So you know that's that's the the joy of working with garden produce, right? Like sometimes it's not gonna be perfect. But that's okay. I think that uh, you understand how this dish works. You just use like store-bought okra, try to get stuff that's small. But yeah, it's a really tasty dish. And it's also in that category where I think Indian restaurants completely overcharge for it, where you get like that helping and it's $15. You can just make your own. You just gotta get good okra. So that's our show today. I hope you enjoyed Bindi Masala. It's fun to say Bindi Masala. And I hope you enjoy this fun vegetarian-ish, yeah, vegetarian dish. That's how you do it. Any closing thoughts, Kevin? I'm still chewing. Still chewing. <laughs>